And so we have part three of me working on this first measure of Kapustin's Stokacina. Right, and so I'm trying to make it taka 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 taka, you know, very steady tempo, roughly 120, maybe not quite there yet. Light mezzo piano, last note, you can kind of see that highlighted red smudge, that's the accent. And right now, you know, I can kind of play the notes, but it's all slightly imprecise. So back to my practice of gobs, which starts at the last note. Well, in this case, it starts at the last note of the measure, but it's any note that you deem to be the last note of whatever passage it happens to be. So I'm making sure of a couple of things when I practice this one single moment. All hands are doing what they're supposed to. My right hand is ready for the chord coming up, the one that's right there, and my left hand is striking the G accent and pulling right in. All right, so once I've established I can do that, good, I continue on, and I like to do this half step, if you like, where I'm already at the point of having struck the previous chord, this one, right? I'm correctly extended to continue playing what I'm supposed to play, but I have to introduce an extra little move in my right hand there. So that's the move, right? And that's labeled by that position marker symbol, that red rectangle. Right, so that's all I'm doing. Making the accent and readjusting the position. All right, moving on. Now I will move <clears throat> just before this chord so that I actually practice striking it down. And now I can really work on that precise. But I always, always have to check that my goal is exactly right so that I'm not doing something incorrectly and building it into me through my somewhat incorrect practice. So making sure it's a light mezzo, port, uh, mezzo piano, which you cannot see because of the way my covers overlap. There it is. There it is. Okay, so once I've established that, usually the first couple of steps are quite easy, but you still have to kind of monitor what you're doing. Uh, now I'm going to hold that half covered up chord, and I'm supposed to play that G note with finger two in the left hand. So, okay, one more time, make sure it's really precise. A little slow, perhaps. Better. All right, and now, once I've made sure I can kind of play that to a certain standard of satisfaction, whatever it happens to be, uh, I'll go on here and play that part. And this is where I think last couple of times I stopped because all kinds of issues started springing up. First of all, I'm not quite playing these four notes together, so I have to focus on that. Bringing two hands exactly together, uh, bringing them down on the keys exactly together is not the easiest of things. And so I, I think I mentioned that sometimes you might want to do this. Stop at a new point, right? Not quite making it all the way to the last note, but bam. Nope. Right, so every time I try to identify what my problem is and focus on nothing but that one thing 
everything else I don't care about. So in, in this case, I make sure I don't have to care about it by only limiting myself to these two chords. And, you know, hearing how imprecisely together they are sounding when I play. So, make sure it's exactly together. So I'm really isolating every single pulse to make sure, at least by itself, I have enough coordination to do it. Okay, what about this next one? So that's fine. And that's fine. So if I do it step by step, it's fine. But how do I do it quickly? So one thing I have to also remember, uh, when I play these G's, you can't really tell what's happening there so fast, but I'm not really letting it come up all the way up to the resting level of the white keys. It's a little bit depressed before I hit it again. That kind of action allows me to play it reasonably quietly, but still with a fast enough repeat. So, so one of the things that I could make sure to do is when I try this first chord here, I must make sure that my thumb will keep it slightly depressed before my second finger strikes it down. Good, but now remember to bring the right hand in place. <laughs> so many things to think about. I'll start at the, at the end of this little fragment one more time. Just like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think what I'll actually do is play this last G while keeping the, the, the note, the key, a little bit pressed down with that second finger. So I actually do this. It's a different feeling than playing it like this. And in reality, I'm not going to really be perfectly in this position when I'm playing at that speed. So I might as well do it this way, where I'm keeping my finger to on G, pressing it down just ever so slightly, and then teaching my hand to do that. Hmm. Not together. Still not together. <laughs> that was better. That was a good staccato. All right, let's see if I can integrate it with these two chords. Uh, what is it? I'm pressing it down a little bit with finger one because I'm coming out of that previous note. It's almost like I could do this, half cover it. Right. And then two on. That was not too bad. That was bad. That's not so great. Still not so great. <laughs> it's getting there, but I really have a lot of work still remaining. So last note is this. And then the one before it will be like this. Nope, not together. Better. That was nice. Uh, now, previous chord would be... Mm. It's not quite there. So, I'm keeping it down with finger one. Mm. Okay, 
So again, you can see how much I'm having to process and think at every juncture until these thoughts become instant where I don't have to figure things out. Uh, but my mind kind of already knows what the problem is and basically what I have to coordinate to get there. That's when practice takes off and I can actually start improving. But at this stage, I'm analyzing everything in this microscopic level of detail. And of course, as the result, I'm only stuck on these three different notes uh, in a piece that's you know thousands of such notes long. So uh, that's fine because it will teach me some really important aspects about the rest of the piece. And I, I will always know that this is uh, as good as it's going to be once I master it. So again, that's end of part three. Stay tuned for part four.